What's up, everyone? It's your boy. Top 10 decks that can win a YCS right now if Yu-Gi-Oh, uh, you know, came back. So let's get into straight into it. Before we do, make sure to get a beautiful trip gaming playmat on tripgaming.com and rock the greatest playmat. The Twin Electromite Cloth Playmat or the Triple Electromite Cloth Playmat. Get yours now or the Servant Redeemed Cloth Playmat. Let's go. Get yours ASAP before they all sell out. And if you guys want two players, you can get them on PayPal down below. Just message me on Facebook first because they're almost all sold out of two players. With that being said, guys, smash the subscribe button. Let's get it. We're going to go straight into it right now. Stay tuned to the end of the video to figure out the top 10 decks. And number one is going to blow your mind, baby. It's the most best deck of all time. It's the most underrated deck of all time. It's the best deck. Of all time, but let's get straight into it with the honorable mentions. All these 10 decks could legitimately win a YCS at any given moment, as long as there's like a pendulum card in it. So they're all really, really good decks that I think could win legit any event. So every deck is really good. They're not just like tier two decks. They're all they could all legitimately be tier one. Uh, honorable mention: uh, Dynamis, Odd Eyes, Metal Foes, Pendulum Magician. Every single Pendulum deck ever made in history is an honorable mention because they could also win any YCS at any given moment. So, uh, Abyss Actor's best deck. Uh, all right, so uh, let's go with number 10 now. Number 10 is Numeron decks. This means any trap deck that throws Numeron in it, Eldritch that throws Numeron in it. I understand number 10 people think, yo, Numeron number five, bro. Numeron number two, bro. Numeron best deck, bro. No, Numeron actually sucks. Like, people don't understand how easy it is. They only have one play. It's called Zexel and nothing else. Their whole deck is built around Zexel. So it is very easy to counter a Zexel. Very easy, as long as you have a brain. If you have one of those, it's very easy to, to defeat any Zexel deck in the world. You just have to ensure that your deck and side deck is created for it to obliterate it. So, uh, see how every deck right now, or at least everyone with the brain, understands that. Numeron is not that good and it's very easy to defeat. Hence, I only put it at number 10. But again, it could win a YCS. Who knows? What if some random YCS right now, they just get lucky and no one draws their Zexel outs? You know, Numeron can legitimately be a threat right now. So I put Numeron at number 10. Number 9, which a lot of people think Numeron deck is better than this deck, and it's actually not. This deck is incredibly underrated, and arguably better than a lot of the decks above it. And that is Mermail. With the new addition of Infernoble, Megalith, Dragonlink, all these new cards and decks that came out that are legit threats, bro. These are legit threats. So... Sorry, guys, got something in my eye. You know, the pen guy got a C. Pen guy got a C. That I poked in my eye earlier, because... Uh, uh, long story, uh, long story short, uh, there's no actual story, my eye just hurts. Uh, anyways, number eight, Dinos. Dino DNA, baby! Dinos are a really good deck, very underrated deck, I think. People don't understand the power of this deck. It does every synchro play that Eldritch, drag, El synchro Eldritch garbage does, except that you actually have Conductor on top of that, and you get protected with Dolka. It's a very good deck, and if you play pure Dinos, you end up with the auto win and Conductor plus Barrier Statue, which is an incredible combo. So Dino's number eight. Number seven, and a lot of people are gonna, again, think that, yo, Trip, how are you, like, ra rating this deck only number seven? Well, Synchro Eldritch. Synchro Eldritch sucks. Synchro Eldritch Dragonite. You can throw Dragonite in there. Because in my honest opinion, in my honest opinion, any deck with Eldritch in it shouldn't even be in the top ten. They're just cards that are useless. I think the Eldritch engine is the most overrated engine in the planet history of Yu-Gi-Oh. It, it, it absolutely sucks. Now, Synchro, if you could figure out a good Synchro Dragma build without Eldritch cards... Yeah, it's probably pretty damn good. But Eldritch, I think absolutely blow. I'll be honest with you, I think they suck. I think they could steal win sometimes, but I think they're way too inconsistent. And when I say inconsistent, you're going to draw some garbage like Curse Eldland, Golden Lord, Conquistador, Conquistador, Scarlet, and, and like Cry. Or you're going to draw like a Valor and Cry. You know, like, there's just so many traps that are just bad. I don't understand grind game, so good grind game. No, I'm just not a fan of it at all. I think it sucks. I think there's a lot better Dragma version, which I'm going to explain as we get into the video. Number six is Inferno Bull. Some people would rate this uh, not as good as Synchro Eldritch. Some people would rate Nubron better than Inferno Bull. Noble. Some people would rate Dino Mermail better. Some people would think Inferno Bull is even top the best deck or the second best. Well, I think Inferno Bull is solid at number six. I think there's a few other decks that are just simply better than it. Uh, so I put Inferno Bull number, number six. Yes, it extends a lot. Yes, it does. But I figured out a very easy way to defeat it, and I will be showcasing it on Patreon. This is when I figure out how to defeat Infernoble, if you guys don't know how to defeat it. It's very easy. I post on Patreon in the next few days, so go sign up down below. Pendulum training on it as well, so go check that out. Uh, number five is Megalith. Not many people know what Megalith does. This deck is absolutely ridiculous. Absolutely amazing deck. Like, this is the most underrated, least talked about deck right now. 
Megalith is arguably the best deck after Pendulum. I'm not even joking. Megalith is absolutely insane. It's ridiculous. Uh, I'll be po I just po I already posted a uh, Megalith, uh, like, you know, comment tutorial, how two cards equal, like, auto-win board, plus all the plus in the world, and how the deck profile of the deck that in second place is LCS with Megalith. Megalith is damn broken with the new support that I just got. So, we gotta give respect where it's due to this deck. This deck's very, 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 very powerful. Number four is Dragon Link. Some people would even put Dragon Link a little higher. Dragon Link's pretty good, man. It's really, really good. So now when you think of those decks we just said, I take Dragon Link over Synchro Elich any day of the week. I take it over Inferno Ball. I take it over Dino, Numeron, and Mermaid 100%. But see how good the decks are of this format? This format is something that we've never seen. 10 legit decks that go into YCS. Like, this is not even with Trap decks and Sky Striker and stuff like that. I mean, like, actual legit really, really good decks. That at some point, if this is a different format, you could take any of these 10 decks and they could be the best deck in any of the past, like, 50 formats, to be honest. Uh, and so is Dragon Link's extremely powerful. I consider the FDK part of the Dragon Link as well. Whichever version you want to play, it plays through hand traps extremely well. So any deck that plays through hand traps, I'm a fan of. Number three is Dragma Invoked. Dragma Invoked is currently my my personal number one non-pendulum deck that I play. I think Dragma Invoked is extremely good and way better than Eldritch, Eldritch Dragma. Eldritch Dragma absolutely sucks. Uh, you take you lose the one hand trap. Dragma Invoked is way better in the grind game because you get non-stop Dragma cards automatically and you get Alice every single turn, but you never brick on like and you still end up five interruptions every turn or four interruptions every turn and you don't lose just on like the one hand trap on the needle fiber. So I'm a big fan of Dragma Invoked. I think it's a very good, uh, very 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 good deck. And after Pendulum, this is actually my go-to deck, the Dragma Invoked deck. Number two is Rock. So Block Dragon is still legal, and until that's the case. Rock and Megalith are going to be up there at the top five, if not better. Rock is very powerful. You must give respect where it's due with Rock. Now, yes, you could clear an entire Rock board with one Forbidden Chalice and then Chain Droplet, get rid of the Chalice, get rid of two or more monster interruptions. Yes, I understand that. But the fact that Rock can still play like 12 extra cards and not part of the deck and still put up a gigantic board, it reminds me of the actual best deck. And the actual best deck, Pendulum, baby! Let's go! It's the actual number one best deck in the world. People don't understand why I'm always a Pendulum. It's not about, uh, yeah, how many talks Pendulum had in the last year, bro. It's not about that. We only have one Pendulum player in the world. His name's Steven Trifonoski, Trip Gaming, the Pen God. So it, it's the best deck, bro. It's just the best deck. If only other good players play Pendulum with me, then you guys understand. So stop playing your garbage meta decks, everyone, and play Pendulum with me. Join the movement. Join Patreon if you think you suck. We can, together we can destroy the meta. Pendulum is just the best deck. I try to tell you guys on and on again. It plays through hand traps like nothing. It plays through everything. Interruptions like nothing. You can side all the spell cards and serve it. It's just the best card in Yu-Gi-Oh history, baby. Let's go. And don't get me started when Electrum comes back, bro. With all these new decks, this is gonna happen. New balance. Block Dragon, banned. Rock and Megalith, shit. Next. Needle Fiber, banned. Every single Inferno Ball deck, sucks. Synchro Ellis, sucks. And then you're left with Dragon Ball Invoked and Pendulums, which Pendulums obliterate to oblivion, baby. The only way that a Dragon Ball decks are extremely powerful is with Maximus. But if that's the only deck, everyone will play it. If that's the only deck, everyone will just play uh, cards in the extra deck. As I showed you guys uh, in my video on Patreon, how to destroy Dragma, the Pendulum Best deck. That's all I got to say. So, if you stay to the end of the video, you're going to agree that Pendulum is the best deck. You're also going to agree that the only way Pendulum is the best deck is if you play it on a 2 Electro my Cloth Playmat. And the only way that you can actually win a game of Yu-Gi-Oh! is if you play it on a 2 Electro my Cloth Playmat. So you guys should go do so. And buy some down in the description below, baby. Let's go! Pendulum just the best deck, that's all I gotta say. And if you guys don't think so, sign up Pendulum Training, where I teach our guys how to play Pendulum. And hey, if you guys got this far, I mean, smash the like button and the subscribe button. Comment down below if you guys uh, disagree with my top 10. Because uh, if you disagree with my top 10, uh, you're just wrong, boys. If you disagree with the top 10, you're, you're just wrong. You're just wrong. Pen best deck. Get it through your heads, baby! Pen best deck! We'll see you guys next video. Peace!